Civ 4. Hmm, I was a bit iffy about Civ 4. Civ 5, after all the expansions, is quite good. I think uh, Civ 5 is re where they really, really started this pattern of like releasing incomplete games and then only completing them two expansions afterwards. And this is partly because it's so expensive to make video games these days, right? So in order to pay for the development of a proper Civ game, they basically have to sell you the game and then two expansions. And then after you pay like 150 bucks <laughs> for all of that, then the game is, is good. Q says loves Force Conquest through passive... Yeah, no, that was cool. They removed that in 5, I think. Actually, did they? Did they ever bring it back? I'm not sure they bring it, they brought it back. Yeah, so like uh, religion and culture, I think it was. Like if you were culturally much more advanced than the uh, than your enemies, then the cities would just flip to your side, right? Civ 5, I mean, I've got the expansions for Civ 5, so I'm just trying to remember how it was. The diplomacy, usually the diplomacy uh, in the base games now are quite simplistic. I, th I think they brought it back in the latest expansion of Civ 6 Q. I seem to remember the latest expansion of Civ 6, you could uh, flip cities through culture. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm also a little bit tired of the incomplete games that you have to wait two expansions afterwards to complete. Granted, when they finally finish the games, two expansions later, they are, they're quite good games. But I don't know. I mean, it ends up being a... I feel like there's a lot of fake hype because of that. <laughs> it's like, when a new Civ game launches, I feel like it's fake hype because everybody knows it's not finished. It doesn't get finished until a few expansions afterwards. So like, personally, I would get hyped for a Civ game after the, the second expansion comes out. <laughs> That's when it's appropriate to be hype. Alright, so this is the station. Let me put a label down. This is 3 4 Deep Wood. Ah, uh, let's go see what Wesley's doing. Wesley's. Okay, he's just gonna. So we, we decided on a coastal railway, right? We're gonna. Oh, there's a river here. Awkward. Where do we. Cross the river. Wesley reckons we should come over here and then turn north. Alright, yeah, I'm just gonna see what you have in mind. Uh. Left room for change. Yeah, no, I mean, we have to figure out, like, bridges and things. Mm. We can have, like, a, a crooked bridge. Or maybe we just don't go diagonal across there and then turn back in. Coastal railway. I want to bridge across. All right. Uh, sure, sure, we can do that. Bridge across, and then this part is pretty easy. It's pretty flat over here. And then uh, follow the coast. 
press across again. And then planes. Okay, well let me... I'm gonna start from the other end, Wesley. And uh, we'll see if we can meet in the middle. Oh, the, uh, they recently finished the Crimean Bridge. You know, from, from Russia to Crimea. That's a pretty cool one. <laughs> and uh, what amuses me about the Crimean Bridge is that they've been, they were, they've been talking about it for like 100 years. <laughs> and then the Crimean Crisis and the Ukrainian conflict happened. And then within like three years, they built the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> so, they were talking about that bridge for a hundred years, and then a war happens, and they immediately built it. <laughs> it's like, I mean, it's so hard to get things done until there's a war, and then things get done. So I guess we go straight out here. Uh, we should step up. Let's step up. So we're gonna step up there. Come across to there. Well, this says it's weird to say, but war does bring loads of good advancements sometimes. Well, I don't know about good advancements, but definitely advancements. <laughs> Not always good. I mean, the thing is, like, uh... Yeah, like, if people are willing to spend things in wartime that they wouldn't spend in peacetime. <laughs> Maybe it's not just... well... I mean, war brings war advancements. Not always good, but things get invented for war, and then after the war, used for the public. I mean, some of them. Some things, right? I mean, uh... I think I said this before, like... A lot of the... The tank factories... From World War II just got converted into car factories, and then we got a lot of cars. But then there's things like nuclear bombs that don't really have any civilian use. <laughs> like, it's not, it's not that useful as nuclear bombs. I mean, we have, like, jet aircraft coming out of the the war technologies. So some, some things are useful. Not everything, though. <laughs> I guess missiles got turned into rockets and we went into space and all that. the lake, so we want to turn in. It's a stretch, but most of the things we know come from some technology built for war. Well, it's kind of hard to separate, isn't it? It's kind of hard to separate peacetime technology and wartime 
technology. Cell phones, like radio. But I think we would have invented those things anyway. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, war puts a focus on a certain type of thing. But it also takes focus away from, from other types of things. Alright, so here I want to step down. What's going on? Flowers. Here I want to... I want to step down... Twice? Once? How many times do I want to step down? Possibly twice. Let's step down from here. Uh, oh, this lake is at this level. This lake, there's leaves in the lake. Mm, awkward. Awkward. I guess we're gonna have to fill in that lake at some point. Maybe we don't step down here, let me change my mind. Why do we step down like here? And, uh, two, three, and four. Ah, uh, this is too close to the water, isn't it? No, it's too close to the water. Alright, let's, let's work backwards. Let's work backwards to figure out where to put this. Also, this tree probably has to go. There's a lot of trees. Hey, I think I know why you chose to start from the other side, Wesley. Because there's less trees. So if we skirt this lake here... Yeah, no, okay, this tunnel is two. <laughs> Three, four, five, six... Oops. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, this probably has to go eventually. Okay, this lake, this lake has to go. I'm pretty sure. Oh, you can see more clearly in the water now. Kind of. But we hate water. We're gonna fill it in. Um, we're gonna have to fill the other bit in later on. Most likely. I think they changed the water quite a bit. I don't think it's just the texture. Although I do like how they... the the aquatic update, now that I'm seeing the new water texture and everything, I like how they put in so much effort. Yeah, almost everything about the water has changed. I mean, it's not just one of these little update where they tack on a new mechanic without really thinking about it, <laughs> which 
they used to do, Mojang. It's like, okay, this update is a piston. Good luck. You can put things like fences in the water now and it looks normal. Oh, real? Wait, really? Wait a minute. Do signs still hold back the water? Wait, signs don't hold water back anymore. They just broke all the... They just broke all the mob traps. They stop a stream? Hold on. <laughs> oh, they stop a stream. But how do they do that? <laughs> What? Under what conditions is a sign... Does a sign not displace water? It stops a stream. But then if I just put a sign in there like that, and then like that, and then like that, and then like a sign on a sign, it's just still water. And then like, can I just bucket it out? Like what if I... Hold on, let me get a bucket. This is, uh, this is more advanced than I thought it would be. A bucket of salmon, you can bucket, you can bucket your fish out of the water too, I think. So if I bucket the water out of the sign, wait, you can't do that? Wait a minute. I can't bucket the water out of the sign. Oh wait, I can do this? Same with stairs, slabs, fences. Yeah, I guess all the transparent blocks. Oh, you can't bucket this out. But there's no water in the bucket. <laughs> Wait a minute. There's no water in the bucket. Uh, what's going on? I missed some chat. If you put items in the source block, the block becomes a source block, but streams are different, yeah. This is the... I, okay, look, I'm trying to bucket water out. And the bucket doesn't fill. I think there's a, I think that's a bug. This must be a bug. Unless it's only in creative. What if I, like, put a bucket of fish on the ground? Oh, it just becomes, like, a water and a fish. <laughs> Okay, well, I just... <laughs> I didn't... What did, What was I expecting, really? What did I expect to happen when you put a bucket of fish on the <laughs> on the ground? <laughs> Literally, a fish and water comes out. <laughs> it's literally a fish and a block of water. Fascinating. Okay, let's go back to building trains. What an interesting update this is. What did I have in this block? I had cobblestone. No, that's cobblestone. What did I have here? I don't remember what I took out for this. Slabs. What happens if you put like a, a top slab in the water? The bottom half is still water. If you put the bottom slab, the top half is water. That is so different. They completely changed the water mechanics. One, two, three, four. It's a huge update. Q says, are you on the latest patch? I read somewhere that one of the later patches would break the ability to keep the map if you update again. I don't think they would do that, would they? I am on the latest patch. Uh, if I go explore new chunks, there'll be new stuff in the water. 